There he is. So we're on the Missouri River here, south of Bismarck, North Dakota. Put in at Hazleton, which is kind of on the, I guess what you call the, the upper end of Lake Oahe. The fishing seasons don't close in the Dakotas, and so every spring these walleyes push up out of Lake Oahe, and then they push up into this Missouri River system. You know, all the way from Bismarck, all the way up to Washburn, all the way up to Garrison Tail Race. You know, there's just tremendous, tremendous walleye fishing, and you know, you just come out here and just catch a lot of fish. There's a lot of eaters in the system. Obviously, you've got the big fish opportunities as well, and so one of my favorite things to do every spring, you know, there's all these sandbars out here, Canada geese honking on the sandbars, tremendous walleye fishing. There he is. Oh yeah. Those are big small moths anywhere. We got her. Oh yes. wow. Ah, oh, just a beautiful fish. This is incredible. <laughs> Look at that beast. <laughs> got him? Oh yeah. Getting silly now. <laughs> Keep on doing it. Oh, good fish. I don't ever get tired of catching fish like this. Wow. That is gorgeous. Jason Mitchell Outdoors is brought to you by Shields, Crestliner, North Dakota Tourism, Blackfish, Bismarck Motor Company, Salmo, Travel Manitoba and Jason Mitchell Elite Series Fishing Rods. You know, the big story this year is lack of fishing opportunities for a lot of people, lack of travel, the whole COVID-19 events that are kind of changing the world, changing everybody's lives. Too, we haven't been doing a lot of traveling and traveling to other states and filming and trying to be respectful of it. But at the same time, I also really want to encourage people to fish. We're just doing short trips just around North Dakota here where we have no closed season. We've got a lot of great fishing opportunities where obviously we would never have to travel anywhere if we just had to film episodes here in North Dakota. There's plenty of fishing. We've been just staying close to home, just traveling with our team and uh, trying to get out. And there's a lot of people fishing, which I think is good. I think fishing is even more important in times like this. I'd encourage you to get out and fish. You might not be able to go somewhere far, somewhere exotic, but just go right down the road. Get out and take care of your mind. I think fishing's the best pill you can take for Corona. There he is. Look at that. Love those head shakes. I don't know how big it is. The fish kind of mislead you in the current all the time, but oh yeah, oh yeah. Beautiful wall. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. One handed in the current. Oh, come here. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Oh, that is beautiful. Just pitching up on that sandbar. I'm guessing this fish might have been in, yeah, maybe two, three feet of water. And the water is just starting to bump up into the high 40s. There. Yeah. But look at that. <laughs> First fish of the morning. You know, I missed a fish earlier that I'm assuming wasn't this big, but yeah, gorgeous walleye. That's why we're here. Just a beautiful pre-spawn female. These fish will be dumping their eggs soon. <laughs> fish do not like captivity. <laughs> Came right on this slick shad, that new Salmo slick shad. It's got a really narrow profile for cutting the current. That's why I'm using it, you know, pitching on a river here. There's current. I just wanted to cut and slice through that current a little better, a little bit better bottom contact. That's why you see so many people using ringworms and some of these narrower profiles of fishing rivers, but. You know, just to take a time out here, just to add a little bit of clarity, we uh, did an interview with the Grand Forks Herald, and you know we talked about a couple of things that happened that morning, where we basically started out the day with just two incredible fish. Basically, to back up, we 
got out really early in the morning and we had drove by one spot that we wanted to fish. There's a boat parked right in there, so we left them alone. We went into another area where we'd fished the day before where we pulled crankbaits and we caught a few fish and went in there and pitched, maybe spent 10, 15 minutes in there, I don't know, but we never had even had a bite. So we popped into another spot. As we were going along the river, we were driving along, I saw something white floating out in the river. And it was, I thought it was foam at first, but I drove up to it, it was garbage floating down the river. And I hate littering, and so I slowed down so that Taylor could scoop it up in the net. <laughs> and so, first fish get on, you know, it's a good sized fish. I've got this jug caught in the net. I can't get it out of the net. And so, look at that footage here. Yes. Ah, get that out. Oh, here we go. <laughs> but when I told this story to the Grand Forks Herald, they, Brad Doc, and I, we must have got our wires crossed somehow, but he thought it was the fish that I would catch next, where I had the jug still in the net, and the fish was in the net, and the jug was in the net, and that was just a, a miscommunication. And so I wanted to clarify that, but at the same time, you get to see <laughs> the conch show this behind the scenes sometimes. But Yeah, yeah, and filming it, the, it causes a lot of confusion because as a cameraman, I'm trying to anticipate your next move so that we can get from you know, one thing to the next and capture the best footage, but <laughs> you weren't I hear you, the net. <laughs> yeah, I hear through the audio, like all this wrestling going around, forgot we didn't take the jug out of the net. We probably didn't think we were going to catch fish that morning, I don't know. But what was interesting is when we netted that, you netted that jug, we had it in the bottom of the boat, and you're looking at your phone like, well, today's Earth Day, that, that's going to bring us good karma, remember that? You're, that's oh, going to yeah. be good luck today. Yeah, yeah. And it ended up being good luck and so I guess the moral of the story is when you're going down the river and you see some garbage pick it up it's good mojo yeah <laughs> good karma <laughs> yep the best of luck so let's get back to the to the next fish oh another good fish this is a good one. Oh. Just love them big head shakes. <laughs> oh, they do not like the light, do they? Look at that fish, it's just bulldogging. Big head shakes. If this is a walleye, this is a really good fish. Oh yeah, look at that. That's first two fish. Probably weigh over. <laughs> 20 pounds in weight. But I haven't landed this yet. Oh my, I wish I had a bigger net and I wish I wasn't by myself. Oh my, oh my. Boy, this is tricky. This is tricky. Oh, and I got her, yes. <laughs> this is unbelievable. <laughs> it doesn't always happen like this. This is a big walleye. All right, let's do it. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at this. Look at that. Oh, oh, oh. That is a big walleye. That's the biggest walleye I've ever caught. That is a big walleye. That's the biggest walleye I've ever seen. That's a whole nother animal. I mean, this is a this, I mean, I'm guessing this fish is over 14 pounds and I have no way to prove it. Yeah, I'm like an idiot, I don't have a scale in the boat. So I'm just gonna use my boat here and see where that is right there. But I'm gonna let her go. Oh, I just, a fish like that is so special. That is the biggest walleye I know that I've ever caught. I've caught a few of them. And now all I can do is lie about it because nobody will believe me. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. We can just load the boat now. <laughs> my, my, I cannot believe I have any mojo left after those first two fish. You know, I never ever imagined in a million years that I would ever have the opportunity 
to touch a fish like that or to catch a fish like that. I've seen on forums, on internet, things like that where, you know, a person keeps a record fish, you know, a lot of people criticize that person. Well, you know, in my mind, that fish is at the end of its life. You know, that fish is reproduced several times over the course of its life and that fish has you know, descendants and next of kin swimming up and down the river. For myself, I just made the decision to release it and, and, I, and I don't want to take anything away from anybody that, that has a record fish, you know, that did weigh the fish because I didn't weigh that fish. And so, uh, for all I know, it was a half pound short. It might've been way off the mark. I tell you what, for me, that was incredible. That was exciting. That was by far the biggest fish that I've ever seen in my life. I mean, I've seen plenty of, you know, 10 to up to 12 pound fish but this was a whole nother species. It was absolutely incredible. You know, and so just to add a little bit of more commentary, I guess, or play by play. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What's funny about this, Taylor, and you know this, but when I first set into this fish, I thought for sure I snagged a walleye. The bite felt funny when I set the hook and I thought for sure that I had snagged what I would guess to be like a 26, 27 inch walleye in the belly or in the back or something weird because I just couldn't lift this fish. I mean, it was just so heavy and it was just swimming against the current and it was just, you know, these big long head shakes. And so it felt like I had snagged this fish. Yeah, and, <laughs> and it's so much when we're filming as a cameraman and you're in front of the camera, so much is said, you know, without words, right? We just have to react to each other. Yeah. You're fishing and, and you're adjusting yourself and there's a camera in the boat and I'm trying to anticipate your next move. And when you're fishing in seven feet of water as a cameraman, I got to get the lens to the water fast if I'm going to see that fish emerging because really I got three to five seconds before a normal walleye will be <laughs> visible in seven feet of water. Yeah. <laughs> And after, you know, a minute or two of that rod just bent and you couldn't budge it off the bottom, I, w I didn't even, I was filming just line going into the water. We couldn't even <laughs> see that fish. It was like, at that point in time, we were talking to each other through mental airwaves going, do you have a sturgeon, you know, <laughs> but we can't, we're filming. So we kind of can't say those words. It was just really like this really like tense, but also this memory. Yeah. And I can't remember if I said anything to you or not, but I thought I had snagged a fish. And obviously, you know, yeah, I mean, you snag a fish by accident, that happens with fishing. And obviously, you know, when it does, you know, we, you know, we can't show that on television, you know, because it's not a legal way to catch and harvest a fish. And so <laughs> I was actually horsing on the fish. Yeah. I was like, I was like putting my, my hand on the spool trying to just get it in, in the boat. The memory of it is just, it's just crazy to think hindsight, what ended up happening, because when that fish did emerge, it was like just sobered up immediately <laughs> and game faces were on and it was like, oh man, this is a walleye. Oh. And the reaction uh, to both of us was just speechless. There's like yeah, 10 so seconds. So I go from where... thinking I have a nice walleye snagged and I'm horsing on it to, you know, looking down the water and seeing it's, it's not snagged. And it's the biggest wall I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. And I, I'm looking at it just through the display on the camera. I don't, you know, it, behind the camera, I'm not actually looking at the fish with my own eyes as a videographer. I'm just looking at the display on the camera. So I'm, I see what I'm capturing. It wasn't until that fish was already netted and I came over, took a peek at it. And I just stopped in my tracks and I just, I, I told you right then and there, that was the biggest wall I had ever seen. And that's the biggest wall I've ever seen. Yeah, me too, I think. <laughs> I mean, I think we need to measure this and yeah, yeah. this is bigger than what we think. You know, just, we just took a picture of it with a cell phone, you know? Yeah, like five yeah. photos and were taken Just because of that we wanted fish. to get it in the water. I mean, yeah. we, you know, and I remember just, you know, thinking, okay, you know, you don't hold this fish out in front of you because <laughs> you don't need to, first of all. But I remember just having my elbows in my ribs and it was just massive, you know? But I think the biggest reason I threw that fish back is it was just so incredible. <laughs> You know, I thought it'd be just so cool if some little girl, you know, fishing outside of Mandan with her dad, you know, caught that fish a couple of days later. And so, you know, when fish get that big, their best days are probably behind them. But in order for a fish to weigh 13 pounds, somebody had to release that fish when it was 30 inches. Yeah, there's people that'll catch a big fish and they mount it, and that's fine. But I think what's not being said or what's so important is that there's so many people that have caught big fish 
you know, they're throwing those fish back now. Well, then guess what? You know, that 30-inch fish can get up to 32, can get up to 33 inches or bigger. Yeah, I mean, we were joking. As soon as we caught that fish, we'd used up our mojo for the day, maybe for the season, who knows. But it went downhill from there. I mean, we hopped around to a lot of different spots. And we caught, you know, a fair number of fish. I mean, it was fun fishing, you know, catching fish on plastics, you know, making a long cast up on the sandbar and getting popped. I mean, that's good living. And, you know, we caught a fair amount of fish, but, you know, they're like 13, 16, 17 inches, you know. But it was just a... Obviously, an incredible day we'll never forget. Yeah, I'll never forget it. 